You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover hard couple months, but it's in this this enough so you can know what's up in the hood. So the letters of STEM stand for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And it's a program in, um, it's a short way to describe a program in schools focusing on science and math, technological uh, subjects, and how they connect to each other. To have projects and things which call upon uh, practices you learn, calling upon you know things you might learn in, in science or biology or physics and, and applying those to solve practical problems, I think. STEM education is defined as the teaching and learning in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics that includes educational activities across all grade levels. Um, define it in a nutshell. I mostly teach. I teach calculus, pre-calculus, algebra 2 is what I teach right now. The American educational community has really started to focus on STEM because of the increasing need for competent people in the STEM careers. Um, and we have seen that, um, you know, there still are not enough people going into those careers. And our need for people in those careers just continues to increase as a nation. Calculus is about studies of how things change, how you can uh, look at, how you can add up things over time. Um, but I think an important part of what calculus is, it's a gateway to a lot of uh, different things you might study in college or different jobs you might want. Um, aside from what it is in its own self, it's a thing that can open doors for you or close them if you don't do calculus. Some people argue that adding art to the group provides more creativity and connectivity with the other letters. Some also argue that STEM subjects already have the arts involved and integrated into STEM lessons. Can adding the arts to the acronym incentivize you to engage more into this field? Let's find out. Interesting. There is certainly a push to make STEM into STEAM by adding art. Yeah, I mean, well, I think it makes it all-encompassing. I mean, that sounds like almost all learning. Some people also worry that with a focus on STEM, it is sometimes to the exclusion of other things, like art and history and social sciences. So it's kind of a way to get there, um, to make sure that stuff is not ignored. There is an art to anything. If you know a lot about a certain topic, you know, it, it becomes an art. But I'm sure that does make it appeal to more kids. I think there are probably kids who say, oh, I'm not good with, you know, I'm not so sure about science and math. I'm not good at those. I haven't had success in those. So it might make them more appealing. Science is defined as such knowledge or such a system of knowledge concerned with the physical world and its phenomena. Science plays a heavy concentration on the scientific method to test, evolve, experiment, and present hypotheses and theories. Examples of science are space sciences, earth sciences, life sciences, chemistry, and physics. Mathematics is defined as the science of numbers and their operations. Mathematics is a technical foundation of science, technology, and engineering, and it involves finding data patterns or abstract logic to test mathematical relationships and to model the real world. Examples of mathematics are algebra, statistics, calculus, game theory, and geometry. I really think just a part of just learning well is, is just going, doing experiments on things you're curious about, you know? Anything that, any way that you can apply uh, the knowledge you learn to something practical, I think is, is 
how people learn. We're putting the focus on STEM, you know, and kind of really focusing on math and science education, especially for women and for minority groups, um, tend to go less into those fields. Um, that, you know, that is going to guarantee a more diverse workforce in these really cutting edge, high technology fields where America is the leader. Uh, sure, if kids are interested in it, absolutely. And I think there's a lot of our um, society, there's a lot of school, there's a lot of jobs that revolve around STEM. So I think uh, kids are doing themselves a favor if they take advantage of that, if they get to know about it. Jobs involved in computers, math, architecture, engineering, life sciences, physical sciences, and social sciences are in the realm of STEM. You know, if you look at, for, for me personally, if I look at the things that uh, you know, I, I've gotten the most uh, enjoyment out of it. It's, you know, following my curiosity. So I think that as long as you can do that, if, if that relates to STEM, that's, that's a good thing. I have a feeling it will. I mean, think about how much of our world revolves around technological things. I mean, our interview right here is using how much high tech. Uh, you know, the GPS I used to get here. The, so much of our world revolves around technology. Um, if you look at, um, like the Department of Labor does a survey about what are the best jobs, the best professions. The top, out of the top 20, maybe 18 of them revolve around science, science or medicine. We continue to need more engineers, more scientists, more coders, more people that are able to innovate in technology, and also people that are able to be educated end users of the technology. Technology is defined as a manner of accomplishing a task especially using technical processes, methods, or knowledge. Examples of technology are computer and information sciences, operating systems, artificial intelligence, programming, cryptography, and mobile computing. Technology connects people, making all forms of communication. Engineering is defined as the application of science and mathematics by which the properties of matter and the sources of energy in nature are made useful to people. Engineering involves developing systems, structures, products, or materials. Examples of engineering are aerospace, petroleum, civil, mechanical, industrial, electrical, and materials. I think that a lot of things are focused more on technology, obviously. You know, you have things such as this, this piece of junk in the garbage in the in the water right now picking up garbage you know something like this is just completely based on uh, you know a applications of science and technology in such a way that it becomes readily accessible to everybody so from things down to here to you know uh, anything more complex I think it requires those types of skills definitely we're really a leader in the innovation but not in manufacturing anymore so we need to still have kids that can innovate and lead and, and continue that process that the companies have started already here in the United States. Art has always been a way for people to express themselves. Arts education has always been deemed as important, but it's always been treated as otherwise. Rahm Emanuel and other CPS officials promised that all students across the city would receive an education in the arts. In 2014, Raise Your Hand Illinois conducted a survey and collected data from about 170 Chicago public elementary schools. They discovered that 65% of those schools don't offer the minimum two hours of arts education per week. My name is Gregory Buckner. I'm 17. I go to Shy Arts. 
Um, my name is Zion and I am an, a dance major. Tyler Jackson, I'm 17 years old. I go to the, the Chicago High School of the Arts. My name is Armani Howard. I am 22 years old. Um, I am a working artist. With dance, um, there are different types. So each type, I dance in contemporary, modern, jazz, and lyrical. And in those dances, my emotions, they influence my moves. So that's how I express myself. I feel like throughout any like style I use, like painting, drawing, illustrating, or anything graphic, uh, color is usually something that's very uh, consistent. I usually consistently use the same uh, color palette uh, to enforce like my ideas. Get in like the idea of like what my style is one, but then also just experimenting with it and experimenting with like the influence of other styles, experimenting with like just like all the different types of art that's out there because like within it, it goes back into like your own work. Mm -hmm. So. If you go out into the world and you experience new things, and I kind of use that loosely, it doesn't actually have to be just like painting. It could be like food, it could be music, it could be someone's culture, like that's all art. So if you go out and you experience as many of those different things as you can, then that's gonna eventually influence your art because you're now taking in so much new stuff that you can take inspiration from. You're taking so many new factors of the world that you're living in to like experience the work itself and it's and just art. If that was the mindset we have for everything, the things around us we wouldn't have. We wouldn't have cameras, we wouldn't have planes, we wouldn't have any of that stuff. I get a little bit upset because with art you're supposed to express yourself. Like what am I supposed to be doing then? Like if I'm not doing this, is there like something I should be? Doing I, believe, I really don't care what anybody else say because like if you want to do it you should do it because it's your life it's all about you it's not no about what anybody else thinks about you that's also why I chose dancing because with dance there are no limitations and I can express my way myself in any other way like I'm not gonna like conform to like what I'm supposed to be doing because that's like an idea that doesn't really exist so like it's it's kind of goes into like a whole nother story of things, but like it's just that person's personal fear. And like they don't do that in their own life. So yes, because you are both in the same world of things, like if you want to try something that you think that yes, it may be a lot of work, just do it. Just try it. Like that's, I don't know, that's just like, to me that's just like the most demeaning thing you could do to someone if someone's trying to do something that just because it's not the conventional way. Like yes, it's not science. Like you can blow something up if you don't chemically do it right. But like, besides that, you should be able to try anything. Like, just because you're at a certain level doesn't mean that you can't like, just keep shooting for something bigger. Cause then it's like, what are you gonna do at that point? Um, what inspired me to dance was when I was five years old and I was in my first recital. I guess after that, I always wanted to be a dancer. And since I was told I couldn't say certain things growing up and I couldn't do such things growing up, I chose dance because with dance, I can do whatever I want and no one can tell me what I can and can't do. Um, like, just looking at different stuff on the media, like if I really like to see what they're doing and I really want to go for it, it like inspires me to actually like push myself to do it because I just feel like we can do anything that we put our mind to. So, and what really inspires me is myself, to be honest, because I believe I can do whatever I want. So, yeah. At first, it was just like the possibility of like what I can do. Um, seeing like a painting for the first time, seeing like artwork for the first time and just like realizing that like a human did that. And I don't, I don't know, I just don't want to make this seem like it's very cheesy, but like at this point now it's like completely different. I want to like see how many people I can like positively influence in the world. When I was younger, 
uh, my elementary school didn't have art class for at least five years. So, and I really didn't have like, like a lot of people in my school didn't have a, a lot of experience with art and art can portray your feelings in so many different ways. It was kind of cheesy though. It was like, like you use Crayola and like, and like that even now I've gotten older and I've been able to appreciate those like, like those materials. Cause like, yeah, it's like, it's color principles. It's still something you can create artwork with, but like we also had art teachers that weren't very like, thought inducing like they weren't like it was just kind of one of those things where it's like here's some construction paper here's some crazy scissors some glue and colored pencils have fun and like yeah it almost becomes like yeah like it almost just becomes like a joke like the way school approaches art it almost it's like a joke the way they treat it so we did but I wouldn't now that I know what art is I wouldn't consider it an art class when I was in elementary school, I had an art class pretty much from when I started until I was in about the seventh grade when I guess like CPS, like budget got cut or whatever. So like, I've had an art class for a majority of my life. There were like maybe two or three years where I didn't because you know, since I go to art school, I kind of have that extra education. But outside of that, no, not really. Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like school should um, provide an arts education, like even not just in art, but like like bring back art classes and like dance classes, like music classes, just because I feel like I feel like if kids who like there are a lot of kids who aren't exposed to like those type of things, and if they had that exposure, then they would feel you know more open to express themselves, and they would be less into like social media and like stuff that kind of distracts you from the world outside. Like, I feel like art classes would just help you gain an appreciation for, um, for kind of like the world around you. At least like get the idea of like what you can do with art and like what's the possibilities of it. Um, there should be more of like a, like a realistic focus of it. The only thing is, is that a lot of people, like a lot of teachers and instructors, like it's kind of sad because like art is a very like, it should be a very unbiased and open thing, but a lot of like art teachers can tend to be very limiting. Like once like a, like a younger artist or just anyone who's younger, they just think that it's like, you can only do so much at that point in time. And like, yes, that's true. Your art gets refined over time. You become more experienced and become better the older you get. But it's just limiting if like you're shooting for this art at a very young age to like, mold that so that way when you do get older you're even better than what you were when you were younger like i it should be it should be like a it should be mandatory almost like as much as we have like gym and like math and all those things it should definitely be mandatory but it should be refined and like i don't know they should just go back to the drawing board with it and just like treat it as if it was one of those other classes people have always had different ways of expressing themselves and within those communities boundaries have been set thus holding them back and telling them that they can't work outside of their chosen medium. The people shown here are not bothered by what people say and do it anyways because it's what they love to do. Hopefully, city officials will one day recognize how, many, how much of an impact art can have on a student. Art is like, it's kind of like at this point in time where it's like undermined and like how powerful it is, but you can like change someone's life with art. Someone can look at something and can be from a certain area and like just because they looked at something that they didn't understand and it touched them, they're now influenced to like want to go do something. I think women should be able to do what interests them, and if that's STEM fields, let it be. Not all STEM fields require you to be like strong, and even if they do, a woman can still do it. Not necessarily here, but back when I was in college, since I'm a, I have an engineering bachelor's, back then I was the only female out of a class of 30 men.
it was kind of rough. It's anything men can do, I'm sure I can do it well or even better. Um, I mean, basically we can stop just the mentality of how people feel that women belong in the kitchen and men need to be the ones working. I mean, yes, men are stronger, but a lot of these STEM careers don't don't require you to have the strength. It's more of like your brain and thinking and, uh, and how to do calculations in that. So women can do it just, just as well. Is ever since I was small, I was interested in computers. And when the opportunity rose to go to college, I knew I wanted to do something in a computer field. So I went for computer engineering against my parents' wishes. And I'm still paying for my school because they refused to pay for it because they wanted me to be a nurse or be something other than an engineer. But yes, he has, like he's, he said he wouldn't help pay for my school. He ended up giving me like part of it, but it's still a lot. <laughs> Reverend Walter L. Coleman. Well, I know that uh, there's, there's a, an important movement here uh, to move all of our students, but especially women, uh, into uh, the sciences and uh, to uh, some of our more difficult subjects here, technical subjects. I think that um, you know we're facing a time in, in which uh, the technology is changing, uh, and uh, not only the jobs will be in different now uh, and require different preparation, uh, but also the services will be different. So when we look, for instance, at healthcare, where we do a lot of work, uh, the uh, healthcare usage just you know, you could be a nurse's aide or you could be a nurse, and that's where women, tech, you know, generally went and stuff like that. But really, there's a whole range now of um, medical occupations that require uh, a STEM education. Uh, the, uh, and it's not just for research, but even in the providing of services and so forth. Uh, yeah, I think women have always dominated the healthcare field, except amongst doctors. Uh, and we want to change that. Uh, because for the same reason that they make better nurses than men, they also make better doctors. Uh, well, uh, you know, for instance, uh, I was the pastor of my church, uh, and uh, my wife is now the pastor. Uh, and she really, there's no problem in our congregation with that, uh, because she's always really been the pastor in the congregation and so forth. But within uh, the general denomination of the Methodists and stuff, uh, women pastors still run up against a lot of problems, and, uh, and they're better than some other denominations. So the Catholics, there's only so far you can go. Uh, the, uh, and a lot of the evangelical churches, they really don't like women as pastors. And um, even when, where you see sexism the most is where there's not an ab absolute prohibition. In other words, it's, a, it's not legal or possible for a woman to take a certain position, but where it's discouraged. And that's what we see a lot still in the church, that uh, women pastoral leadership has discouraged a lot in the church. I think the, the issues have been uh, the role uh, that women have played in the family. Uh, and some people have thought in the past, uh, because it was a particularly narrowly restricted role in the family, uh, that they couldn't hold important, significant jobs uh, in the employment market. Uh, but the family is changing. Uh, and uh, families tend to be more partnerships now than they were before. Uh, and men are taking more responsibility in terms of raising children in the home and so forth. And because that's changing, I think attitudes are changing. But we've always, I've always taken a position that really uh, we need women in every position that there is. The program that we run uh, here at the school is called the Youth Health Service Corps and we bring uh, especially medical students uh, the, uh, to come and work with the students here and uh, prepare them so that and then we actually get the students get out in the field to involve themselves in getting people screened. Uh, getting people screened in basic health service, you know, the health needs and diabetes and so forth. Yeah. So that puts the students in touch with uh, puts the students in touch with uh, medical students, some of which are gonna go into research and science and 
some of which are going to be doctors and specialists and stuff like that. So, uh, and we try to actually we work very hard to get as many women medical students, female medical students as possible to come in so that uh, the students here get uh, they see that they're women in those professions. Uh, I assume that it's a, a, an abbreviation for women in sciences and math. Uh, the those those type of uh, careers. I feel that as American, we should have more people in general, not gender classified, it's just more of American students should get into the math and sciences. How else are we going to go past the moon and cross the universe if you guys don't understand math? My wife is an engineer and uh, she's been held back on several occasions, passed over uh, by males who are less qualified and who have entered her job uh, environment bef uh, after her and thus she's not taking those higher positions because she's a female and they feel intimidated. I don't feel intimidated by women. Uh, I welcome them as accountants, lawyers, scientists, doctors because you know once you guys make it in those fields you all are going to better mankind I hope in some form or fashion in your communities. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you students and I'm looking forward to seeing you all this upcoming year and I'm looking forward for those grades to be very high in math and science so that you guys can become STEM people, okay?